here is the cause of all autoimmune disorders. Now, I would guess that you've been waiting um, ever since that you had the diagnosis. The diagnosis comes after uh, much suffering. Your s symptoms are presenting. And finally, you're told, hey, you have an autoimmune disorder, and you get a name. And never at once do they give you the cause of this whole process taking place in your body. So here it is in brief, uh, viral load. If we are exposed to uh, a multitude of viruses in our life that um, our body is incapable or, or uh, lacks the resilience to get rid of, and they continue to live in us, they stimulate the Th1 cytokines, which activates a uh, uh, cytotoxic T and natural killer cell activity. Molds and parasites. Uh, parasites will often live in your intestines, and you don't even know it. Molds in your environment, and uh, many times you don't know that either. They're breathed in. They affect the lung barrier system, and eventually they stimulate the Th1 cytokines, just like I mentioned, the T cells. Stress and insulin. Chronic stress, which could be physiologic, low oxygen, inflammation, it could be emotional, social, uh, losing your job, anything that uh, is, becomes chronic then becomes a hormone problem and that changes your immune system and that stimulates the Th2 side, the, the B cells. Dysbiosis, which is your intestinal immune system, we see the commercials on TV for Activia and things like that that have uh, healthy bacteria. Well, if that bacterial environment gets upset, you know, it's more than just constipation. Let's say we get something in there that is a little uh, more pathologic, uh, clostridium, parasites, yeast, uh, candida species. Your intestinal immune system has been activated. There's something called haptins which are the inorganic chemicals, heavy metal pesticides, environmental chemicals, which stimulate the Th2 uh, side of the immune system. There's even more. Ongoing activation, like I mentioned, the food allergies. We'll get a little bit more into depth in the Im immune barrier compromise uh, on the next slide. But all of these things result in an immune imbalance and can trigger the autoimmune process. Your genes parents determine what tissues are attacked. But without any of those things happening, all the causes of autoimmune disorders, uh, those genes won't get triggered to activate. So whether it's your brain, your thyroid, your uh, exocrine gl glands, like in Sjogren's uh, syndrome, pancreas, like in type 1 diabetes, joints as in rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, I believe that there are many autoimmune uh, conditions that aren't treated as autoimmune, like um, dizziness, a lot of times has an autoimmune component. Uh, peripheral neuropathy, fibromyalgia, many times has an autoimmune component. Um, autism, uh, you know, I mentioned brain over here, but anything that uh, results in a significantly or severely altered brain function, it has the potential of being an autoimmune phenomenon, and the only way you know whether it is or not so that you can actually treat it is to do the tests. You have to do the tests to see if it is uh, part of the process. So get the right diagnosis. We do our metabolic testing. And the number one thing that we do in autoimmune conditions is called the lymphocyte subpopulation. This is the T and B cell subpopulation. It's just a, how many of these guys are in there. Natural killer cell populations. And the information that that gives us is, um, first, we look at the T helper to T suppressor ratio. And that'll tell us if there's a high helper uh, ratio. We have an ant active antigen. Antigen, again, being one of those foreign things. And then we have to actually dig in and, and see if there are viral uh, loads, if 
there are food sensitivities, if there are um, intestinal infections, or if there is barrier compromise, we have to find and uh, relieve that active activation of your immune system. If it is immune dysregulation, a lot of times you will see a uh, T helper to T suppressor ratio um, less than two. And then we know we just have an immune dysregulation problem and we need to get to work on balancing the immune system. So if we do have an autoimmune uh, condition diagnosed, we also want to take a look at the cytokine panel and see what hormones are being activated, uh, uh, Th1 or Th2. Uh, cytokines are the name of these uh, hormone-like chemicals. So those are the panels that we run along with the CBC to take a real deep look at the immune system and start the diagnostic process and understanding of why you have this condition and what we can do to restore health and get you back into a state where your immune system is being nice to the rest of your body, whatever that might be.